On Law Weekly today, we discuss some of the challenges stalling the judiciary from deploying technology for its services. We have the views of a foremost legal tech expert, Okwe Ulugasa. Also showing on the program, two senior legal practitioners share with Law Weekly how they are coping with the lockdown and its effect on their law practice. Plus a recap of how state governments are punishing violators of the lockdown directives and the social distancing guidelines. That's our lineup on this episode of the program. Hello and welcome. I'm Shola Shoyeli. Last week on the program, we talked about the need for the judiciary to join the rest of the world by taking its services online. This week, I bring you the views of a legal tech expert on some of the probable issues stalling this move. Okwe Ulugasa is the managing director of Law Pavilion Business Solutions, an organization that pioneered the growth and adoption of legal tech in Nigeria. He led the development of Africa's first legal analytics software and a new feat in electronic law reports and legal research, Law Pavilion Prime, which is widely used by lawyers and judges. A regular facilitator at law conferences both within and outside the country, Olugasa recently concluded a management executive education in artificial intelligence at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, with focus on the application of AI in the legal industry. Here's our conversation. Many people believe that the Nigerian judiciary is still stuck in the pre-information technology era, but what in your opinion is responsible for this? Is it a lack of funding? Is it the rules of our courts? Is it the heads of courts? What do you attribute it to? If we look fundamentally at the issues that are somehow, I won't I would say not necessarily um, well, wrong, but more importantly, more out of place, then I will actually categorize them into five, five areas. One, and I call them the errors of the system. So for me, the first error is, um, the, the one of funding is there, but I'm not, I'm not shying away from that, but there are things that can be done, even with the present amount of money that, um, that's available in the system. So first one, I, I, I call it the, the error of professional cocoon. And um, what I mean by that, it, it's not limited to the, um, to just the legal profession, it's, um, it's general. As a professional, if you look at um, in, in, in medicine, the, the best hospitals, yes, they are run by the chief medical, um, by doctors who are um, CMDs, but if you notice, those doctors have also had to learn beyond the four words of medicine. I mean, they've tried to learn what strategy is. They've gone to biz for business management. So in my opinion, the, the, the error, part of the main error that's actually plaguing the system is, as I said, the error of professional cocoon, wherein, okay, you are, you've been a judge um, for, for, for years and therefore you, you just transit to become the chief judge or the head of a court, you know, either in a state or um, in, in any jurisdiction. But I think it's important that the system begins to engage the, um, right, right, say the, the cross fertilization of ideas, wherein they also learn from other professions. So to rule or to run a system, to run a, an institution, requires much more than technical know-how. It requires, in fact, my recommendation, and I've made this recommendation, maybe because of our discussion, I will talk about some of the things that, uh, that we have seen. I've been at least studying this, this system for about 15 years. Some things I've seen. Now, in that one, I've made recommendations years before now that the heads of court, in fact, the strategic way should have been done is that the, from number one, the four most senior um, judges, judges in a particular um, the, the particular court should actually be um, should be sent on training or exposed to management training. I mean, they could help package something for management. Of course, this is what the Singapore of this world did. I mean, you just don't. The room wasn't built in a day. You just don't come in and think that the child will just pick up. Look, it takes strategic, systematic development of the leadership of the system to know that look, strategically, this is where we want to be. So they need to learn the um, the, 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 the business of management. They need to learn strategy. They need to learn performance evaluation. And when I'm talking about performance evaluation, it's not just oh, how many judgments do you deliver in a, in a quarter? <laughs> I'm sorry, those are mundane performance evaluation systems. Now you need to engage, there's something called balance scorecard, and in fact, performance evaluation has even gone beyond just balance scorecard, but even let's start from balance scorecard. What are the key things you look out for? So the first thing, as I said, because I don't want to take too much time, is I call it error of professional cocoon. Our heads of courts must or should, permit me, should be exposed to management studies. That is, that's on one side. Then um, the other one, I, I, I call it the 
the, the era of status quo. Now, you, you know, everyone knows and we and understandably well, it's a conservative, um, conservative yes. profession. But then I always like to quote what, um, what, what was named um, Lord Denning. Always said, I mean, one says in Paka and Paka, that look, what's the argument on the other side? That there's no case in which this has not been done before. If we do not do what has not been done before, then the whole world will, be, we will, we will stand still while the whole world moves ahead. And that's bad for both. And the importance of this is that um, if we do not begin to rethink how we operate, we will be standing still while the whole world is moving on. Now, all of a sudden, it's painful, but COVID-19 is suddenly jolting every one of us out and say, look, we could have sorted some of these problems in different ways. We could have sorted some of them in, would I say, um, applying different methods. Now, so why must we, the, 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 Kenyan, the Kenyan story, the judge, um, judge, judge, the judge in Kenya, that I mean, all over the internet saying that delivered 57 judgments in a via, via online um, video conferencing, she just used Zoom. It's just a change of mindset, for goodness sake. I, I, I will say this, sorry, let me digress a little. Now, most of the times too, we also need to understand, as I think it was Albert Einstein that said it, that look, the level of thinking that brought us, that created this problem, is not the same level of thinking that right. can be, so that's it's... required to solve it. So that's why this links back to the issue of professional um, cocoon, that we need to learn from other industries. In fact, if you look at the fintechs, most of the technology, the, 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 what, um, what most of the innovations in fintechs were not necessarily brought in by the bankers because the banking system opened up to other professionals. And that's what I would personally um, recommend for the judiciary. You need to also invite other professionals, other technocrats from other fields. Let's sit back, let's brainstorm, let's see what can be done. Now, I've talked of the era of professional cocoon. I've era talked of the era of status quo. Um, uh, this one, the era of kinsmanship. And this is a major thing. So a number of times we have seen we, we, we have seen here in this country, we have seen projects, judicial projects being run. And when we look at it, you all first of all look at the, the quality of the thinking that brought up that solution. You know that this cannot solve the problem. And what is the key issue here? Because, oh, there we, we've made a provision of so, so millions. And therefore, ah, my brother that just finished. <laughs> <laughs> computer studies does not even practice anything. I bring him, yeah, you come and let's do this. And these are the things that plague the system. So it's not necessarily, in my candid opinion, it's not necessarily just about funding. It's about the right action of the funds. It's ability to get the right people. Let's practice meritocracy for goodness sake. I mean, if I'm sick and I need a doctor to, um, to, to treat me, at that point, I, would, I need to perform surgery. I won't be asking, where are you from? Or who do you know? No, I just need someone that is good, someone that is capable. And that's what I think we should begin to engage in the system. As long as we stay on that lane of casemanship is who I know, no, we won't. Uh, that, would just, that would just lead me um, quickly to my, to, my fourth, uh, to my fourth point, which I call the, 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 the error of looking outside. And um, I, as I said, it's painful that Nigerian judiciary wants to engage in technology in solving their problems. And all we have done is to keep looking outwards. We want to import technology from US, we want to import technology from Singapore, and without even understanding what are the limitations in Nigerian infrastructure. We're not looking at deficiencies here. We're not looking at, there's something called, um, in, in, in product development, there's called, something called design thinking. We're not looking at what's the psychology of the, of, um, of, the, in, of the industry in Nigeria, of the professionals in Nigeria. How do we make them adopt this kind of thing? We're not looking at that. And so Nigerian judiciary wants to do something, and then they're importing Indian tech developers, Indian software, um, software developers to develop software for us in Nigeria. It, it beats my imagination. Now, I'm not in any way saying, oh, let's just, um, let, let, let's, let's just close our eyes and we must at all costs look inwards. But I'm saying there are, um, th there are talents in Nigeria. Well, was it last month? I was talking with a couple of friends. I mean, <laughs> these are guys that, they're Nigerians. They're, they're actually working for the, the, the artificial intelligence for big institutions in the US. And then I'm wondering 
how is it that we in Nigeria are about the only country that we want to get anything done, we always only look outside without considering the capacities in house in, um, I mean, in the country. And then how even would we grow? How would we enhance, develop ourselves? How would we grow our, capa our capacity if we do not engage local talents? The other one is um, the error of data analytics. We do not interrogate data in this country. And that's a key issue I've also seen. Now, someone said to Peter Drucker that said, what you don't measure, you cannot manage. So the judiciary um, wants to, all I hear is, we want to be faster, I want to be faster. Yeah, our target must be smart. It must be specific, it must be measurable. So, one of the questions I always ask in my class is, which judiciary in Nigeria is the, um, has the highest caseload? And everybody shouts, oh, we know, we know. And everybody always says it's Lagos. And sincerely, the statistics available, it's not even Lagos. Lagos has the highest number of cases, don't get me wrong. But in terms of highest caseload, the number of cases by judge, per judge, it's not Lagos. Okay. The last statistics we have is the number of states. Has the highest caseload. Now, the question is, how does the judiciary even allocate resources? Is it based on data or based on guesstimates? Now, when I say guesstimate, it's just a guess work, an estimation. Now, if you want to say how many, how, how, how many cases, for example, pass through um, the court in this in particular year, yes, I'm sure it's easier for them to, to give me that. But if I begin to go inwards and ask that, okay, how many hours does the judiciary spend on land matters? Which matters take much of the, of, the trial, um, of the trial time? You know, if you begin to interrogate those, of those, things, that, um, those, those issues, then it, everyone becomes a bit blank. That's okay, we're not sure. So how are we managing it? Who has this data? The first question we should even ask is, who is keeping, is anyone keeping this data? Nobody is. And so when we're talking of court management system, it's resolution, and this is something we, we were raising later after this COVID-19 um, thing, is that, look, we've been able to build a system because we noticed that these are some of the things that will help us drive management decision making. So all I'm saying is our heads of court should be taught how to interrogate data. Even in even the legislature, in making laws, we need to look at, okay, from the courts, which issues, which laws are actually the most lit litigious? You know, and which session, so that when you are, when you are doing law reforms, it's easier for you to interrogate those things. So we must look at data, and it must be data across board. Looking at data from the judiciary, from the police, from the prisons, from the ministries of justice. These are things that need to be done. But here in Nigeria, we sit back and at the end of the year, we want to allocate budget based on what? I know we've talked a lot about the bench and some of the problems plaguing it, but... What about the Nigerian Bar Association? Is there any role for them in all of this? What role should they be playing? The role of the NBA is to first look inwards. Because don't forget, judges also do not drop from heaven. It's from the bar that they go to the bench. So the NBA in itself must be at the forefront of the adoption of technology. And I'll give you just one simple, one simple example. But things are really changing. I, I give that to NBA. But we need to change faster. Now, um, before now, NBA conferences, it will always be, um, uh, you must come in there, and then you see a long queue. Conference and, materials, you know, enough, and all those ones. You know? But it, I remember the first time we tried to interview them on this, that look, you can't always want to do everything manually. Yes, I will be, I will be quick to say that, look, the first attempt didn't get it. But today I can look and say, yes, I'm happy. At least there was a movement. Today, I'm sure the last two NBA conferences, there was no on-site training, on on-site registration. And that's how it should be. That's on one side. Now, how can the NBA also partner with the judiciary to ensure that there is proper adoption of technology. I think MBA branches also need to come up with their own communiques and their templates and say, look, then the head of the chief of the MBA in each, in each state can then have meetings, come up with their own stakeholder committees. If the judiciary is not doing it as they should be, they come up with stakeholders and then they communicate their recommendations. They take to the head of the court and say, look, we want to drive this. When the heads of court, when the judiciary also sees that the bar is pushing for this, it will jolt everybody up. Right now, both institutions or both um, or sides of the, of, the, of the judicial system need to keep pushing themselves up 
and that's what I think the NBA needs to do. So because a lot of these things, when you're talking of cross-jurisdictional, um, regional trade, a lot of them are going to begin to happen online. I mean, you won't have to travel from here to, um, to, to Togo or to, um, to, to Kenya because before I transact businesses, many of them will be done online. And so the, the legal system must also follow suit and be ready to, um, to service all those people. Otherwise, lawyers from UK will come and be riding that for us. And I don't think that will be good.